Oa? A-O, O-A. O-A would be Oa. Uh, it's, there's no long A sound from the A. The long A sound is the E. Although a lot of times you hear the E as A. So, and I'm not sure whether that's dialect differences or whether there's a rule that I have not been taught. Uh, so E is A. We will get into some as. It, there's a couple of uses, I think, in Puamana, I think, has them. Uh, I is like the English long E sound, so I says E. U is U. It's always U. There's no ch Most of these have one pronunciation. The E is the exception. Ku, yes. Ku was a god. He was a god of war. Oh. That's the vowels. There are, I think it's seven consonants. There are no double consonants in Hawaiian. I forgot to type that in, but you won't see like... Uh, in English, we sometimes have, we frequently have double consonants. We'll have a TH, or we'll have LL, or uh, there's, there's none of that. Every consonant has a vowel at least on one side of it. The only time it doesn't have one on both sides is when it's the first letter of the word. It'll have a vowel that way too because the word before it ended with a vowel. No Hawaiian word ends in a consonant. They all end on a vowel. So when they adopt a word in from another language, like if they adopted my name in, they would probably put an O or an A on it. I'm not sure exactly what they would use there at. It would be kind of incongruous for an English thinker to call himself Paula, but I'm not. It, it might be an e, e, but it would be a pronounced e. It wouldn't be a silent e, and that would be that would be cumbersome in the mouth. I would think it would be Paulet or Paulet. I don't know for sure what they would do with my name. I don't know if they've translated it. I suspect it's happened. David comes into Hawaiian as Kavika. There's no D in Hawaiian. There's no V. There is a W, so they put the W in there for the V sound. A W in the middle of a word is usually a V sound, but a lot of times it seems to be up to the speaker's discretion and he can pronounce it as a W. At the beginning of a word, it's almost always a W. Y, K, K, things like that. Okay, what were the two consonants you named D and? Well, there's no D in Hawaiian, so that's, the D becomes a K. The consonants are, there's a song that I should have gotten a hold of. It's like the alphabet song in Hawaiian. A, E, E, O, U. La, Ha, La, Ma, No. Pu. So H, L, M, N, P, K. Oh, the K would have been earlier before the P. Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't even know my English alphabet anymore. After I started typing, it all went out the window because they started the alphabet with a Q. And then when I went to Android, they changed it again. <laughs> and I've been, I've been in outer space ever since. Uh, ha, ka, la. Mu, nu, pa. And 
And W is the last one. So we have about 12 letters. Uh, there's no S to make it plural. They're actually, you'll hear S's sometimes, and that I think too is a dialect. Sometimes the K sound becomes a T or an S. The T actually, the Hawaiian language evolved out of Tahitian. And the sound is somewhere between a T and a K. When American missionaries went to Hawaii, they heard it more as a K, and they put the K in and taught the Hawaiians to spell with a K. The Tahitians spell it with a T. But it's frequently the same word other than those two letters. From what I understand, a fluent Hawaiian speaker and a fluent Tahitian speaker can communicate with each other pretty well. Not as true with some of the other Polynesian languages. Some of them are further away from either Hawaiian or Tahitian. So, in Hawaii, they travel to Kahiki rather than Tahiti. They have K's in the word, but it's, if you look at the rest of it, it's the same word, just K's instead of T's. And in Tahiti, they leave Tahiti and travel to Hawaii. And you'll frequently hear Hawaii as Hawaii. I figured it was better if I write this down because if I tried to tell it all from the top of my head, I would forget some. And some of it might become important. And when, you're, when you go home and you try to do this tomorrow and you're trying to remember what I told you, I wanted it written so you could refer. Because I know how I am and I'd get home and have four or five questions that I didn't think of while I was here. And I, I may have more than that. The okina is what they call a glottal stop. And it, so if you have a word with the okina in it. And there are women that think a lot, right? There are like black people going in. I hear that. You'll see it. It's got one, but uh, you'll see a lot of places that they didn't bother. Well, yeah, sometimes. Well, if you have a typewriter, or I typed on this, this Android. I can't find a way to put an Okina, so I'm using apostrophes. It's, it's close enough. It'll function. Uh, if you take a word, there's a Hawaiian word, maika'i. M-A-I-K-A Okina I. It means good. If you did a good job on your report, the teacher would say, my ka'i. The original Tahitian word was my ta'i. And somebody created an alcoholic drink, I believe in Tahiti, and they gave it to someone to try, and the person said, oh, that's my ka'i, or my ta'i. And the drink became known as my ta'i. Of course, the English speakers came along and turned it into Mai Tai. They went right past the Okina and just, oh, Mai Tai. And it's been known as a Mai Tai for, I don't know, a couple generations probably. You kind of need to pronounce that. In Hawaiian, they look as the Okina and the Kahako, which is the other diacritical mark, as being equal to letters. They're important. And here in English, we put all these marks on a phonetic spelling so someone who's learning can read it. But we don't use them when we write it. These are generally written, except when somebody doesn't know how to put them or whatever. But it's, they're a part of the word. Uh, the okina makes you stop. So you go, my cut. E, and you have a slight stop before you say the I. An okina only goes between two vowels. 
It doesn't go in between every pair of vowels or they'd be all over every word. There are some words that have no consonants. And there would be two or three okinas in there if they were in every pair. You don't always stop, like my ka'i. You didn't stop between the, any of the other letters, the M and the A, the A and the K. It's just before, between the second A and the I that there's a, a stop. And it changes the word. I put an example in there. I put uh, my, M-A-I, which is a, a it's, I think it's in there if I didn't goof yeah. up and, yeah. It's a direction toward the speaker and it's a common greeting when someone comes to your door to say, e como mai, and they're basically inviting you into their house. It literally means come to me, e como mai, e K-O-M-O-M-A-I. If you put an okina between the two vowels in my, you get ma'i, which means genitals. That's not the greeting for the front door. <laughs> so, and this goes to any language. You go to any other language and you're learning and you mispronounce something and you put a wrong letter in, you might get your face slapped just trying to order breakfast or something. You thought you were saying eggs and toast, but there's, I've heard of people, I know someone who went into the wrong bathroom in an Italian restaurant. I forget what it said instead of uh, English. It, it, well, it was Italian, but it was, uh, they didn't grasp the picture or maybe they didn't have a picture on the door and they didn't recognize the things and uh, the, the lady went into the men's room and realized her mistake immediately when she saw the urinals on the wall. But Yeah, that's so a classic uh, case of Ishinabu dilemma to the German. That means you're a jelly donut or something. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very famous. Uh, My wife had several years of German. <laughs> she, she understood a lot. She couldn't speak it real well directly to a German speaker. Because if they think you, well, I think that goes with any language. We tend not to slow down for people that are learning. And I think that goes with any language. And they start rattling off phrases in a hurry and she would be left scratching her head. But she, she, she in pardon? Did she live in Berlin? No, she, uh, okay. The other <clears throat> diacritical mark is the kahako. It's, if you look on the word kahako, it came with it. It's right over the O, there's a straight line. In English, we would see that and we would think that's a long vowel. Well, in Hawaiian, it isn't a long vowel, it's that you hold that vowel out slightly longer than you would normally speak the other letters. So it extends the time of that O just, just slightly, it's not it's not drawn out like a, a drawl or something. It's just slightly longer than normal. <laughs> now do we, next thing I have here is the vamps. Vamp came into the Hawaiian language from jazz musicians probably in like the 20s and 30s. And the musicians frequently will talk about vamps. Hula dancers don't know it as a vamp. They know it as a ki'ipa. And it's a dance move. And it, it basically, at the beginning of the song, after they play an introduction or instead of an introduction, they'll play two vamps. Now a vamp is 
two measures long. The, when they hear the music start, the dancers will go to a ready position that they've been taught. And when the second vamp starts, they'll start dancing. That's their signal, is those two vamps. So the two vamps will be there whether there's an intro in front of it or not. Sometimes we'll use the two vamps as an intro. Are we going to have two dancers that are so no. Not that I know of, but a couple of people expressed an interest in playing for hula, and I'll see if I can work something out uh, just for maybe a, an evening entertainment so we'll get together with a dancer or two if if I can get somebody that's willing and it may not be summer though summertime they start having vacations and stuff and we don't even do hula in the summer because we can't get in a crowd together to do it so the vamps will typically be The first measure of the vamp will either be the five chord, which if we were in C, the five chord would be G7. So you would have a measure of G7 and a measure of C. The more common vamp would be a two five one, so it would have the two chord, which in C you would have a D. So it would be D seven for half a measure, G seven for half a measure, and then a measure of C. Now they use those, they'll they'll usually have a vamp in between verses, and this Let's the dancers get back into their rhythm in case any of them have gotten off. And it's a, a two measure break between the end of one verse and the beginning of the next. It's pretty common in Hawaiian music to repeat the verse before you go to the next verse. So they'll play each verse twice. If there's a chorus, they'll probably do the chorus twice as well and then go to the next verse and then repeat that twice uh, so when the dancers hear the vamp start they get to their ready position when the next vamp starts they'll actually start dancing the, the step they will start with there is called a koholo, and it's a sideways step. <laughs> Very little, because my legs aren't really up to that, so I've never learned a lot. But I can do a koholo. You would go one, two, three, and then the fourth step is either a tap with the back foot or a sway of the hips. Then you would go the other way. And if I sway very much, I'll fall down. My knees don't dance. So that will be the first thing they'll do. The, at, when they're doing that, their hands will go the direction they're moving. Their hands will point that way. The, the back hand only goes to the middle of the chest. It doesn't cross the middle. When they go the other way, they'll switch the hands. And you'll see that, and you'll, that's the beginning of every dance. Now, it could be that some kumu has a different Koholo with different steps than the tap, tap, taps, or step, 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 sway. Uh, ours. I always thought this was the other way, you know, you go this way. Well, it, during the koholo, you, 
I would like to start with Hole. Yes, the vamp is written in above it. D7, G7, C. It's a two, five, one. Yes. Yes. Uh, if you want to... And you count the letter, the key you're on to, what, so if you're trying to figure out how far you are from C, you do count C, so C, D. Okay. So D7 is the 2, plus he said 2, 5, 1. Yeah, I did right. say it before. If you look at the Nashville numbering system, you'll see it all uses Roman numerals. So the 1 is an uppercase I, Lowercase for the minors, right? Lowercase is the minors, so the two, three, and six chords would be minors. However, what we have here is a... Is a... Well, what we have here is the D7. Technically, the D chord in the key of C is a minor, but this one is a major. This is the two major, so it would be written with uppercase letters. Yeah, if you look at your circle of fifths, see that one? No. It would be D minor. Yeah. Right? yeah. Well, a lot of times you go to the Yes. In other words, sing it to us. I'm going to. Can we, can we do the words without music? We could do that if you want to start with the words. Yeah, I thought of playing it so you would hear the tune. Kalapana Kaileo Nui Ualono Kauka Ohole E Uva La Kalapana E Kulivale Kulivale Ika Leo He Leo No Ke Kai O Kalapana Great Voice of the Sea Resounds the uplands of Hole, roaring is Kalapana, deafened, deafened by the voice. It is the voice of the sea. completely clear on the story of this song. I've heard two stories and I'm not sure if if it's somewhere between the two or if either one of them is right. Is that really common to have the, all, all in Hawaiian and then, and then like a translation? Is that no. It isn't and that's why I seized on this one, because I know we'll have an audience that won't be able to understand a word of Hawaiian. I can't even find a Hawaiian to jam with. So will you teach us how you pronounce these words? So we're going to... 
O Kalapana, Kai Leonui, O Alono, Kauka, O Hole, He Uva La Kalapana, E. Kuli vale, kuli vale i ka leo, he leo, no ke kai e. So that W is like a V sound, right? Yes, in the, it's in the middle of the word, it's usually a V sound. Sometimes on the beginning of a word too, but more commonly the beginning of the word, it's a W sound. You might hear me mispronounce that on the beginning of words of, of sometimes because... Can you do it one more time? Yes, we'll probably go through it a few more. Is this one of the ones we're going to be giving? Yes. Oh, I love this song. Me too. Mm -hmm. Can I record just him doing it? O Kalapana, Kai Leo Nui, Ualono, Kauka, Ohole, He Uva La Kalapana, E. Kuli vale, kuli vale i ka leo. He leo no ke kai e. Kalapana was a fishing village and dates back centuries. And Hole is a region. Well, some of this is, there's the pages with the notes. It goes into it later. But uh, Hole stretches from the sea up the side of the Kilauea volcano. And somewhere within there, the town of Kalapana was located. Being a fishing village, it was probably pretty close to the ocean. Probably wasn't too high up the mountain. But eventually, uh, Pele, the goddess of the volcanoes, reclaimed most of Kalapana in about 1990 when the lava flow took it. She reclaimed uh, about 740 some houses last year this time, between May and August, a little further east in the Puna district. There's no way to stop the lava. No, it just... And there were films. And when the lava got within a certain distance of houses, they would burst a flame. Let's try that again. That's why I get UAS, because different people are Okay. O Kalapana Kaileonu Kai, K A I, Kai. 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 I have a kid's name, Kai. You, it's hard to not put an Okina in there, but it shouldn't have one. You have to go right from the A into the I. Kai is ocean, it's salt water is Kai. I have a kid's name, Kai. Kai. It's, yeah, you, the I is an E sound. What does Kai mean? No, I'm just kidding. Ocean, salt water. O Kalapana Kai Leo Nui Ualono Kauka Ohole He 
Uva la Kalapana E Kuli Vale Kuli Vale Ika Leo E Leo No Ke Kai The E on the end of a couple of these lines is kind of a placeholder. I don't think it's actually carrying a word there. Although in some cases it's, it's like uh, pay attention or listen. Listen is ho'olohe, but this is kind of like, hey, I'm talking to you, listen up or something. But here I think it's really just a placeholder. So would we uh, carry the kai No, you sing the E. That's where I'm singing A. Okay. A. That's the E. Can you try it again? Yeah. yeah. O Kalapana Kai Leo. Kauka ohole he uva la kalapana e kuli vale kuli vale ika leo he leo. Oh, you're you're having trouble with the pronunciation of Kai? Yeah, I, I just can't. It's like three syllables. Right. <laughs> <laughs> One more time, just by yourself. Okay. So you can really focus. So can you Thank you. O kalapana ka leonu E uva la kalapana e kuli vale kuli vale i kaleo e leo no ke kai e o kalapana. Great voice of the sea, resounds the uplands of Hole. It roars in Kalapana, eh, deafened. Deafened by the voice, it is the voice of the sea. The fact that the translation doesn't give a translation for that A is what leads me to believe that it's a placeholder. Yeah. I've seen placeholders in other Hawaiian songs, and it's often an E, and I think that's what this one is. I need to contact some people about a little more about this song. I'm curious if there's any more to it. One story has that it was taken from an ancient chant mm -hmm. and set to music. 
Another story says it was found written on a bulletin board somewhere and somebody put music to it. And I believe I've heard that it was a member of Ledward Ka'apana's family who put the music. So I'm going to write to Auntie Leah Ken, his sister Lay, who sent me the translation. So I'll see if she knows more about it or Led. Makapu'u. When you get to the notes tonight or tomorrow or whatever, you'll see that makapu'u, maka is I or eyes. As eyes, it would be namaka. Kamaka would be one eye. I'm not sure if that relates to the ukulele company. Pu'u is, it's like a lot of words, it can have multiple meanings. Here it's referring to a hill, basically a hill not big enough to be a, called a mountain. But if you walked into the door and got a pump knot on your head, and your buddy would look at you and say, what you get that pu'u from? Your wife hit you with the broom? <laughs> or if you got a zit, or one of these little things like I have on my nose, that's a pu'u. It's a little bump. It could be a speed bump in the parking lot. In this case, it's a hill, which happens to have a lighthouse on it. Now, the name of this lighthouse, Makapu'u, we have an okina between the two U's, so we have a stop in the pu'u. Uh, the name dates back to a legend. Uh, Hawaiian folklore stated that there was a large one-eyed dragon that lived on this hill. He had only one eye. So the makapu'u refers to the hill with the dragon, or it could refer to a bump on the hill, or the hill refers to a bump. Uh, of the bulging eye of the dragon seems to be the most likely meaning. The story of the dragon was that he had one bulging <coughs> eye. At some point they built a lighthouse there because the water around it has a lot of rocks and they warned the ships away. But I found, it, I was amused by the thought that on a hill named for a one-eyed dragon, they put this one big bulging eye up there with a big electric, well, it might not have been electric at the time they built it. It is now. But if you watch the video that I put up of that, there are films of the lighthouse and the hill itself. And there's a trail. You can walk up to the lighthouse. I've never done it. It's, it looks like my knees wouldn't take it. So I haven't attempted it ever. But I have sat down at Sandy Beach around the corner from it where you can see it and played the song while my wife danced. Other than Makapu'u, the rest of this one is all English. Now this is... This is Hapa Haole, and if you look at it, yeah, the chords on Hole were real simple. There's just a couple chords in it. And a lot of the chants were all one and five. There was no other, there weren't chords played to it, but you can hear them implied in the chants. And they're really simple. This one is, there's a lot of big band or swing influence in it. At the time this was written, that was big, and it's got a lot more chords. Makapu'u Lighthouse stands high on the Pali. Day and night she shines her light so ships at sea make sure all right. She's a stately lady, 
you'll see her winking gaily. And though she's friendly, she is lonely. Just for sailors, she thinks only on the top of Makapu'u Pali. And I think I've got some of the chords wrong. I, I'm going to have to double check that at home because I some of them didn't sound right. Do you want to? Do you want to? We can sing it. Okay. Did you say the, the Pu'u is hill or the, the Pali is hill? Pu'u is hill. I, I forgot the, Pali was in the there. Pali. Pali is cliff. Mm. Okay. Pali is cliff. I forgot there's a second yeah, Hawaiian word there. Question. Yeah. Pu'u is the hill. The Pali is a cliff where they put the lighthouse. Kapu'u Lighthouse stands high on the Pali. Day and night she shines her light, so ships at sea make sure all right. She's a stately lady, you'll see her winking daily. And though she's friendly, she is lonely. Just for sailors, she thinks only. On the top of Makapu'u Pali. For hula, we typically sing this three times through because it's short. We make it longer that way. For us playing it at the at the nursing home, probably three next time. We could probably do three, or we could put in an instrumental solo. You don't normally do instrumentals in a hula because there's nothing for the dancers to do. So unless it was choreographed with a solo and their kumu has taught them what to do, you, you don't want to spring it on them unsuspecting. We have a couple of songs that the only recording available had an instrumental piece in it and our teacher's kumu choreographed it around that. and. That's how they learned it, and that's how they dance it. So I have to learn to play a solo in it, which I fake something. And if I can't, I just play the chords and keep it going. But it's it if we'll have enough people that maybe somebody wants to work out a solo, we could do that. Kapu'u Lighthouse stands high on the Pali. Day and night she shines her light, so ships at sea make sure all right. She's a stately lady, you'll see her winking daily. And though she's friendly, she is lonely. Just for sailors, she thinks only on the top of Makapu'u Pali. One more. Makapu'u Lighthouse stands high on the Pali. Day and night, she shines her light, so ships at sea make sure all right. She's a stately lady, you'll see her winking daily. And though she's friendly, she is lonely. Just for sailors, she thinks only on the top of Makapu'u Pali. I think that A7 over ships might have been supposed to be a G because it comes from a D7 and the progression works its way back to the D7 on all right yeah, so I'm betting that's a G there yeah.
Yeah. Yes, I'm going to try that right now.